All right, so my talking points, my notes, if you will, on how to keep her obsessed with you. Because again, that's really what the point of this guy's post is. I'm kind of taking a few steps ahead of him and saying this is what is going to be the most useful because I think he's really rushing into this, all excited. She's special. It's a big surprise that things are going this well. And basically saying, how do I not fuck this up? And I'll tell you how you don't fuck this up. So in no particular order, I've got a whole bunch of them on here and I'll go through as many as I can in you know the first 45 minutes or so before I start taking questions. But queue up if you have a question. First thing, first note I have is be irreplaceable. If you are her best option, if you're her Pergamus best option, she looks at you every day, she says this guy is unbelievable, what a phenomenal dude, I couldn't possibly do any better, other men approach her, she ignores them. Like this is the ideal situation that you're basically describing. You want other guys to be invisible and you want her to be in, infatuated with you. You need to be irreplaceable. If, if she thinks that there's hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other guys out there that are better than you or equivalent to you, then you're replaceable very easily. So you want to be an irreplaceable object in her, in her life. How do you do that? Be the best version of yourself, right? I'll talk about a lot of those things that kind of fall into play and sort of toe the line with that notion, but being a competent, exceptional man, if you're average, you're boring, right? You know, I've said this many times, you can do anything to women today except bore them. They hate that shit. They don't like um, anything that's predictable. They like excitement. It is what it is. Again, I'll get into more of those points in a second. The other thing that I would say is um, some absence is very good for a situation like this. Um, I think one of the big mistakes that guys make is a rush right into let's be together all of the time. Hey, what are you doing Monday night, babe? Cool, you get together. Hey, what are you doing Tuesday night, babe? Cool, you get together. By Wednesday, Thursday, she's probably not that enthusiastic about spending time either as she was on Monday. Just being honest, right? So uh, Dr. Orion Taraban did a video called Give Her the Gift of Your Absence, one of his older ones. And you know, I had him on my channel for Playing in the Wind. I totally agree with it. It's like, you, like absence does make the heart grow fonder. Being constantly available, responding to her text messages immediately. When she says jump, you say how high. When she says she wants to see you on the night, you're always there to see her. Um, you, you have to be somewhat distant, somewhat unavailable, somewhat um, absent in her life. I'll tell you this right now. I know very, very few married people that are exceptionally happy or are in long-term relationships that are exceptionally happy. But the common denominator in every single long-term relationship, and I know lots, lots of married couples that have split up, fight, hate each other, call each other names, disparage each other, sometimes in front of each other, sometimes behind their backs. I know lots of people that are together that don't really like one another. The only ones that I know that really like one another over a long period of time, like they are obsessed, is when they spend time apart. So spending time apart is good for the relationship. Give her the gift of your absence. You know, I've said this many times before, the most successful marriage that I know is a good friend of mine who ended up traveling a lot during the course of his entrepreneur uh, career, 20, 25 years, um, was probably home around a week, week and a half tops a month. And the rest of the time he was busy with the business, uh, that pursuit of excellence, that chase of excellence, let her stay at home, raise the kids. He did this thing with the business and it worked out real well. And they're still infatuated with each other 25, 30 years later now, almost. I think it is actually going to be honest with you because I know their kids are outside of university. You get the point. Don't always be around. Scarcity equals value. Okay. If you're around all the time, you're not scarce. There's no value. You have to be somewhat scarce. So consider that. Um, be strong, fit, lethal. I don't know how many fucking times I got to say this, guys, but I'm going to keep saying it. A lot of guys that ask me for advice. Book me on consults. I see them on Zoom calls. I see them calling on my shows. But I'm a high value guy. But da, 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 da. it's like, yeah, but you're fat. I'm just gonna say it. Look, if you're not in shape, if you're not physically fit, if you've read my book, which everybody always starts, I've read your book. It's been helpful. Blah blah blah. Then why don't you have the 1.62 golden ratio? Why are you asking me about shit that doesn't matter if I can see three chins on you? Okay. This seems so basic to me, and it is something that so many guys just completely screw up entirely. 
I had that guy on a couple of weeks ago, the guy that was an incel, five foot six, 110 pounds, didn't, didn't understand the importance of a strong masculine frame, thought 110 pounds was acceptable. My chick weighs more than that. Like being fit and strong and lethal to some degree are skills that are useful to you as you navigate the world. Um, you're walking down the street and I'm walking down the street. And if you're buck 10, five foot six, and I'm 6'2", 215, 220 or so, and there's a bad guy walking the other way that likes to pick on somebody or pick pockets or you know, wants to steal a watch, he's going to go for him, not me. Being fit, strong, and lethal matters. Knowing how to fight is helpful. Having some sort of combat skills is helpful. But at least don't look like a skinny schlep or a fat pig. Get your, get, get your health in order. It's not just for women. It's for you. It's for your own health later on down the road and for your life. Just women happen to like that. Okay. And you don't go for the bodybuilder look, swimmer's body. That, that's it, right? Like look like Michael Phelps, done. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. Chicks don't even dig that, to be honest with you. Um, let's cover be a gentleman and an asshole at the same time. It has to be said. Women like a gentleman, but they also like an asshole. Hold the door open for her when she's all dressed up. You're going into the restaurant. Pull out her chair, sit her down, help her put her jacket on, help her take her jacket off. That kind of stuff that a gentleman does. You can also be a little bit of an asshole too. There's an old saying in the UK that I used to hear when I lived over there. You know, to keep her around, you've got to be a little bit mean to have her being keen on you, right? If you want her sweet on you, you're going to have to be mean if you want her keen. So don't be a nice guy. Be a kind man, be a gentleman, but don't be a nice guy. Don't be a pushover. If you want to know what that means, there's a book called No More Mr. Nice Guy. Dr. Robert Glover wrote it. Good read. I've recommended it a million times. If you haven't read it, it's worth checking out. I make some references to it in my book. Basically, the TLDR version of it is don't be a nice guy, but be a kind man, right? If you want to dive down the rabbit hole to understand what all that means, you can go do the work and read that book. Uh, what should we do? Let's do the significance of captivation. So being like being significant matters, right? Um, look, there's no way around it. Women like significant guys. They stick around guys that are significant in the world that are compelling, uh, that are captivating, that have something going on. Um, you know, I've talked about this before. There's loads of super successful guys that have had two, three exits. And, you know, by that, like, I mean, like seven, eight figure exits out of their business, made a ton of money, are retired, semi-retired sort of thing. And they become coaching clients because they need help with, you know, the gals, they were a total weapon in the workforce in their business and they do really well. And then, you know, you get into them and they're like, you know, I just can't keep them around. It's like, well, you're tall, you're good looking, you've got loads of money. Uh, you know, you're not out of shape, you know, you're in reasonable good shape. So what, what's the problem? Like why? Well, they seem to get bored and leave. Okay. Well, that's a problem, right? Right. So the notion of doing something of some significance, like even like I had this conversation with, with a world-class athlete once. Okay. I was having lunch with him, a uh, major league baseball player. And he's telling me the story. He's got rings and everything, you know, from uh, world series. Um, inductee to the Hall of Fame. I'm not a big fan of baseball, so I'm trying to remember all the accolades, but big ass name. Like if I mentioned his name, like you would recognize him. And dude's retired, career's done, and he sits down on the couch and he wants to take a nap. And his wife comes over and she starts chirping him. What are you doing? I'm going to take a nap. Well, you can't do that. You know, like you've got to find something to do basically is what she said. He's like, no, I've, I've done what I need to do and I'm going to take a nap right? Like that's the component of having frame in an LTR, but it's everybody that gets shit tested in that area. Even world-class athletes will get shit tested in that area. Being significant and captivating in your life throughout your life matters. You want to keep a woman around. You want to keep her in your frame. The frame component of this is a totally different conversation, but doing those things keeps women interested in you. If you're predictable and do the same fucking thing every single week of your life, she will get bored. She will lose interest in you and other things may become more interesting to her. I'm not saying she's going to leave or she's going to bounce, but other things may or may not become more interesting to her. You spend 
the same predictable schedule, watching basketball on a certain night and watching college basketball the next night, watching football, Cheeto dust is all over your shirt. You're packing on weight. You're not doing anything significant with your life. You're not doing anything to improve it. That's going to suck. Being significant and captivating. You want to keep a check around. The dude's asking the question. You want to keep her obsessed with you? Do some shit with your life. I mean, I'd like to say it's as simple as that, but those that understand, understand, right? Because, because they're doing it or they have done it. Let's go to F her properly. Now that we're a few minutes into the video and we can now talk a little more openly because YouTube doesn't like certain words in the first 10 minutes. I said it. You have to F her properly. If you can't do that, she ain't going to stick around very long. She's going to find it somewhere else, right? You have to be... There's a really good scene in Devil's Advocate. Uh, Al Pacino's in that. And if you don't know Al Pacino that well, he's not a large man in stature. I think he's about five, five or so. And he makes a statement, you know, his line is, you know, something along the lines of he rocks this girl's world. And he's talking about the importance of rocking a gal's world, effing her properly to his mentee. And in that scene, he basically says something along the lines of, you know, she turns around and looks at him after he's done. Like, how did you do that to me? That's what you want a woman to look at you like, you know, she's like, she's got to look at you like, wow. Holy shit. Like I need to, uh, you know, give me a walking cane or something, or maybe I got to call the municipal office and get a, uh, temporary handicapped parking permit. Cause I can barely walk this week. Right? Like this is, like I said, effort proper. I'm not going to explain it step by step. Cause this is YouTube, a uh, guy by the name of Sterling Cooper. I've talked to him on my channel a long time ago. He has a course on that kind of stuff. Um, I can't remember the author's name, but there's a book called Sex God Method. Um, if you're already the Don, you're not going to learn anything from it. But if you don't know anything about effing her properly, read the Sex God Method. It will it, it fills in the gaps. Okay, so I'll say that. The next thing will be do not live together. Now, this one is going to be very controversial. I've thought about making a, a video about this uh, in my car, talking about it in length, because this is kind of like the sort of topic that I'd like to rap about. Um, I've been with my gal for a few years now, obviously, and uh, we're in a non-cohabitating uh, uh, long-term relationship. You know, we've been dating for a long time. We don't live together. Uh, do women want to live with you after a long time? Yeah, they'll make requests. Um, you know, the two smartest guys, three... Is it now three? Yeah, about three. Three of the smartest guys that I've seen that have had the most successful long-term relationships um, that do well post-divorce, you know, into their 40s, 50s, and 60s sort of thing like that. They never live with women again. These guys are divorce lawyers. They're smart. Um, they know how to keep a little bit of distance. They know how to keep a little bit of uh, scarcity in the equation. Um, they know that absence does in fact make the heart grow fonder and they do know that living together complicates the relationship to some degree from a legal perspective and also from a fami familiarity perspective, big word to say sometimes on video, right? But if you become too familiar, too common, if you become something that is always around, you will get bored. You will get bored. You'll get bored of her and she'll get bored of you. Uh, the enthusiasm that you have in the three month mark that you're talking about over here. And again, I mean, in this guy's particular, you know, scenario, he's saying, uh, we don't even ever want to have kids in that case. I don't see any reason why you would ever want to co-mingle your lives or live together at all. Um, can't remember who said it, but somebody from the Mano Swamp said something along the lines of, uh, I want to be married or I'd love to be married again one day. I'd love to throw a log on the fire, uh, you know, have a glass of wine, share a dinner, and then, you know, blah, 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 like all the other romantic stuff, love, sex, all that good stuff. And then I want to walk home down the street to my house and go to bed. Um, and there's something to that. Having a little bit of distance in a long-term relationship and not living together, I personally think can be a great thing. You have to know how to manage it. Uh, women will press you for it. Um, you know, the response that I give is like, okay, well, you know, take a look around and show me a perfect example of two people that have been living together uh, over a long period of time that are that are still obsessed with one another. And they don't exist. 
They really don't. Um, there might be some examples made, but it's like, you know, if they have a solution, I'd like to hear about it. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear somebody that's been in a long-term relationship living together over many years that is still infatuated with them. The only times that I've seen that happen is when there's distance, when there's travel, when there's business interactions, when there's other obligations that take them apart from one another so they're not on each other's feet all the time. Um, women, like I said, uh, that baseball player, once he retired and wanted to take a nap on his couch, wife didn't like it. What are you doing here? Why are you taking a nap? What's this about, right? A little bit of distance is good. A little bit of scarcity, a little bit of... So some of the strange is good. You know, you want to keep her a little bit obsessed with you, right? Um, other note I have here is putting a dent in the universe. Are you doing it? Are you? You know, serious question, because if you're all about her, if you're infatuated with her, if it's like, I've had crushes, felt infatuation, I've experienced sexual urges, but this is something completely different. Whenever we spend time together, it's always great conversation, great sex, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but are you putting a dent in the universe? Or is it all about her all the time? Um, what are you doing with your life? Are you doing something of significance, right? What, do, what is your purpose? What is your mission? Is it just her? Because that's all I'm getting from reading this, right? I don't know what it is. You know, when people fill out this form to request a video, um, let me put the banner up for that one because I know that's going to get one. Where do I find that link, Rich? Um, here it is. Right there. When... People fill out that form to request a video. They do their little email. And then there's a section at the bottom that says, well, link, you know, like link your socials so I can take a look into your life. This guy didn't look at socials, which tells me he doesn't have a life to look into. Or could be that it's so private that he doesn't want me to know about it. Either way, it doesn't matter because you guys know that I've never breached anybody's trust. If you're making a request from me to get some feedback on something, you know, if you've watched my videos long enough, I've never, ever, ever, and I will never do it, breach anybody's trust knowingly or intentionally sharing their social media, anybody in the outside world. It's private. I need to take a look at it to see what you're about. Maybe you got nothing going on there. Maybe you want to keep it private. I don't know, but I didn't get to you know, see any of that. So I don't know what, what your purpose is. I don't know what you're doing with yourself. I don't know how significant you are, how captivating you are. What's the, what's the dent that you're putting in the universe? Another note here. Be attractive, don't be unattractive. So simple. Who said that, Rhinestone? Be attractive, don't be unattractive. Be good looking, be compelling, be interesting, be on some something, right? Be a guy that other women want to be with and other men want to be. That is attractive. Don't be unattractive. What does that mean? Don't be fat, don't be lazy, don't be incompetent, uh, don't be broke, uh, don't have zero status in the world. You know, like the opposite of that, obviously, is all that that means. Um, got a few other here. Let's let's deal with these too. She must know that she is replaceable. So you might think that's counterintuitive to the notion of obsession. How do you get a woman obsessed with you? Well, I've given you some good pointers. But another way to do it is so that she understands that she can be replaced. I'm not saying to overtly state it. No bitch, I can replace you. No, that's not the show. That's not how I roll. But it should be known as a man of some action, of purpose, of putting some dent in the universe, of some significance that, again, I'll go back to it. Men want to be you. Women want to be with you. That you have options. If you don't have options, if none of that exists, then you look pretty boring to her. You look like you look like you are her only source of intimacy, potential intimacy at all. So don't be that, right? She has to know covertly by way of your actions and your lifestyle choices that she can be replaced. Don't go on and on. You see these dorks on social media. It's her birthday. It's Valentine's Day. It's Mother's Day. It's a wedding anniversary. And every single freaking post is the dork praising her, putting her up on a pedestal. I'd be nothing without you. You're my blah, 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 rainbow sunshines and butterflies, my stars, my moon, all this stuff. And the funny thing is, is when you click through over to his social media or over to her social media on like an anniversary, you know, for example, there's no mention of him. <laughs> it's her and her girlfriends with wine glasses on the beach on her last girl's trip away. 
And, you know, his is like a picture of the entire family. You see what I'm getting at here, right? Like, you have to be a guy of some significance. You have to be of some competence, of some interest in the world. Uh, the other thing that really matters, too, is she has to understand that she's got first dibs to you, but doesn't own you. So I don't think that's anything that you can communicate. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to have to get to the point where you have to com communicate it overtly. Um, anytime you have to get to an overt statement like that, um, you're not going to a good area, you know, for being honest, it just should be understood that she has first dibs on you, but she doesn't own you. If she feels like she owns you, like she can do wrong and get away with it. You're screwed, buddy. You know, you really are. Um, like she has to understand that, that, that there could be consequences to bad choices um, in that relationship and that you do have options, that you will exercise other options. Uh, a good example of that is guys that end up in sexless marriages or sexless long-term relationships. You see these all the time on these uh, chat forums and Reddits and Facebook discussion groups. Been married for seven years. We've been together for 10 years. We have sex like once every six months. When before we got together, it was all exciting and we would hang from the chandelier and monkey sex and blah, 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 right? If she's, if she's not exercising her right to first dibs, Take it elsewhere. Remember, she doesn't own it. You have to, you have to make sure that she understands that there that there has to be work on her part to maintain the relationship. Um, because women do try to get comfortable, and I don't think they do this intentionally or get slow or anything like that. But they will try comfort and some laziness in some regard for a variety of reasons. For example, um, you're with a girl. Whenever she's left your place in the morning, in the past, she's always made sure that the sink was empty and your bed was made. Now, months go by, that doesn't happen anymore. Some guys will let that slide and just be like, yeah, I'll make my own bed, or I don't even need to make my bed, or it's okay, I'll put it in the dishwasher later on. But the acute guys, the guys that are unplugged, that are really aware, will say something. Hey, you know, I actually chose you. Like, one of the reasons why I chose you was because... I noticed that you would take the care of making my bed in the morning, you know, before you would leave. And that, and that matters to me. Like I noticed that, right? Why would you stop that? Right? Like what you did to get you in the door should continue throughout the course of the relationship. You see what I'm saying, right? I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.